want to look in Luke chapter 15 on a threefold biblical truth from the Gospel of John chapter 15. And I don't like to use big words and don't nobody think I'm smart because I ain't. But I want to give an exegesis of Luke 15. You say, well, what in the world does that word mean? I know it's not a Bible word, but it's backed up with the Bible. Exegesis means an exposition, an interpretation, a uh, explanation, expounding. And of course, uh, with parables, it means a comparison. So I really want to look over Luke chapter 15 and start it in a series for our Sunday morning messages for a while. And Lord willing, tonight I'm going to be picking back up in our study from Ephesians chapter 5 along with Ephesians 4. We've been talking about from Ephesians 4, a prepared walk where he starts out in Ephesians 4.1 and calls on us to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. And he goes on to tell us how we're to do it. And I'm amazed I was getting ready to come to church and thinking about Ephesians 4, 1 through 4 and how that lowliness and meekness and all that to kind of reminds me of Galatians 5.22 with the fruit of the Spirit. And of course, the next chapter 5 deals with a patterned will. A prepared walk in Ephesians 4 and a patterned will in Ephesians chapter 5. I almost swore my cough drop, Brother Jetty. But anyway, a patterned will. And he told us in Ephesians 5 to be not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So we're going to look at that, Lord willing, in our lessons in continuation tonight. But as I've said, we're going to Luke chapter 15 this morning and gives this, give us this exegesis of threefold truths, biblical truths from the gospel of Luke chapter 15. I may mess up and say John, but you know I'm talking about Luke chapter 15. And the theme of this Luke's gospel in Luke 19, 10 said, For the Son of Man, that's our Lord Jesus. Luke's going to give us emphasis of His humanity. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And so that's Really what our Lord is climaxing His teaching with as He, as the uh, publicans and sinners draw near to Him. We're going to read about it in just a moment. They draw near to hear Him, a multitude of them. And that stirred up the religious Pharisees and, and uh, Sadducees and of course the, the scribes stirred them up and they begin to falsely accuse the Christ of God and they said, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. They were right. He did come to receive sinners. He come to die for them. And on the cross he did die for them. Receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And of course they falsely accused him and called him an illegitimate son in John 8. Called him a wine bibber, but our Lord Jesus did not associate with their evil and their sin because he is depicted in Luke 15 and we're going to make much of that on in the lessons and I'm kind of just going to prepare a heart for this study a little bit in Luke 15 here's the perfect son among the other two sons in Luke 15 we're going to study about the younger son that went off and went to the pig pen and we're going to study about the elder son that got jealous because the younger son comes back home and the father receives him. But more than that, and the greater truth, the perfect son is here in Luke chapter 15, none other than our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God, 
that we might become the sons of God. Well, I'm going to pray and then we're going to read some just slowly and try to keep keep uh, from going any further than just reading to start with. And uh, ask the Lord to help us. Father, we thank you for the great opportunity, Lord, to open the authorized King James Bible, the 1611 edition. The inspired, infallible, and errant, eternal word of the living God. And I do pray that you'll help us in the quietness of this hour. Lord, in this small congregation, Lord, you'll help our hearts, Lord, that we may be, be already at ready to receive with real meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our soul. And what you've written in this passage that we're starting to deal with, whether it to, to the sinner or toward those that are saints, toward the servants of God, we pray you'll use this message to honor and glorify yourself, we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And I said we I picked out, seemed like maybe eight or nine different times in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, three full biblical truths, amen. And we'll see them along and get as much as I can and so much to get here that I need to continue this on the next lesson. That'll be the Lord's Day coming up again. Lord willing, a week from today. But in Luke 15, our Lord Jesus Christ, through the, through the physician Luke, and He said, Then drew near unto Him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Now the him is our Lord Jesus Christ. He's in this this is a him book. It's about him, the Lord Jesus. John 5 39, I use that verse a lot. He said, search the scriptures for in them. Ye think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Hebrews 10, 7, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. How to do thy will, O God. And so here's our Lord Jesus now. He's going to confront the murmuring Pharisees. And they sure were murmuring. And sure uh, whipping at the Lord Jesus and uh, uh, falsely accusing him, trying to tie him up. And of course they had got anger because the publicans and sinners in a multitude had assembled to hear our Lord speak of three parables. Really three parables in one. But it said in Luke 15, one, and I've done, kind of went off a little bit, but I shall try to read this now. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying. Now our Lord perpetually, in a continual way, over and over, he, He's got a word for those that come against Him. He didn't have to think up anything to say or what to say. And so he's going to answer as to these accusations and, and of course with their anger against the publicans and sinner. And he spake this parable unto them saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. Notice now, I'm picking up a lot of these uh, uh, subjects I'm going to address in threefold truths, amen, from Luke 15. But it said, and when he had found it, here's a lost sheep. When he had found it, 
He layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying, Unto them rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than the other over rather more than over ninety nine and nine just persons which need no repentance. And then the second thing lost not only a lost sheep and found, but here's a lost silver lost and found when he said in verse 8 either what woman having ten pieces of silver if she lose one piece does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it and when she hath found it she calleth her friends and her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Amen. And of course, I'm not going to take the time in the lesson today to continue on this third account. Not only a lost sheep and a lost silver but we have a lost son. When we, and I'm going to take the time to read this one verse in verse 24. And here's the father speaking. For this my son was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. And so kindly a little excerpt Jesus of, uh, of expounding, giving interpretation and, and, and going over in comparison with these three parables of Luke chapter 15. Three full biblical truths from the gospel of Luke chapter 15. Now this first subject we see three particular things lost. And I've done already jumped ahead. But I'm going to kind of get it on our heart a little by repetition on this day. A lost sheep in Luke 15, 4. A lost silver in Luke 15, verse 8. And a lost son, Luke chapter 15, verse 24. And we're seeing lost and found, dead and alive, incorporated in these messages of Luke chapter 15. And I'm trying to cover all the bases for uh, to give an overall look at Luke chapter 15. Second of all, I see a threefold perspective groups mentioned in Luke 15. Now let's just look at it. Going back and reading my text, he talks about the publicans and sinners. Now they've gathered. A multitude of them, by the way, have gathered and drew near uh, to hear what our Lord had to say as He gives the parables of a lost sheep and a lost silver and a lost son in an answer to the murmuring scribes and Pharisees. Amen. All three perspective groups, not only the publicans and sinners, those publicans, those tax collectors and gatherers of the Lord's day Matthew chapter 9 and of course sinners and mainly and more so than any and I know it's not not here but I'm going to try to deal with it on later and look at this lost son and this lost sheep and try to direct it to lost sinners for that's why the Lord came amen over in Luke chapter 5. And I'm taking the time to thumb back there and read this passage. And again our Lord's repeating this. He's done that over and over. With the Pharisees questioning him about why he had come to, uh, to receive sinners and eat with them. 
But in Luke chapter 5, verse 30, But the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Question. And Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. And thank God there was a multitude that have drew near, have come to hear what the Lord had to say. Amen. And I'll, I'll say more about that along as the Spirit would allow me to. But anyway, many times the Lord spoke in parables. That means comparison. Given a earthly story that speaks of the greater truth of a heavenly message. Amen. That's really in all essence what the parable is. And sometimes He gave parables to uh, so others that, that believers could receive the truth. And sometimes like He did in Matthew 13, the parables of the mystery of the kingdom, He'd give it to conceal the truth for those that were unbelievers. But here's these groups now. A prospect, threefold perspective groups mentioned in Luke 15. Publicans and our Lord sure did come for sinners or we'd been, been in trouble. Amen. All oh, this Bible said, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Amen. All oh, thank God on his agenda when he came in, in his virgin birth. His incarnation when He was born in this in the flesh. Amen. Oh, I remind our hearts He came for one reason. Came out of eternity. Thank God. Came and, and to die upon the cross for hell deserving and, and sinners that were lost in the first man, Adam. Amen. Lost in the fall. And I've got a saying from Luke 15. Lost in the fall. But thank God found in the call. Amen. God has called. Come to call sinners. Amen. And so we got the first group. The, the, the publicans and sinners. And that's where we were. And I hope to get there a little bit later. The Lord willing. And then the second group. In this threefold perspective of, uh, the, uh, of groups mentioned of people the Pharisees and the scribes and they sure were murmuring against the Lord that Pharisaical religious crowd I was coming to church this morning have to pass several big churches we call it the first church they call it downtown and a lot of these other big churches and they were congregating in groves and, and I thought well, I don't know. I don't know if that's good at all. I'm telling you, all oh, they they it, with their the religious profession, how without regeneration, the religious programs and the religious uh, well, we could call the religious uh, not profession, not only their profession and their programs and and their ism and their schisms and and all they've got arranged, all that pharisaical religious crap. Our Lord sure struck out with them. I tell you, they wouldn't be on being saved. But our Lord sure did give us uh, uh, that His contention against uh, the religious Pharisees of His day. With their religious rituals and the religious profession and the religious Pharisaicalism. Oh, I'm telling you, our Lord Jesus said, I'm not come I'm not come to call the righteous but sinners unto repentance what does that mean he said I'm not come to call the self-righteous oh I've come to call those that will repent and take their rightful place before a thrice holy God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and so we got the publicans and sinners we got the Pharisees and the scribes and then we got another group in this threefold perspective view of, of group, per, perspective groups mentioned in Luke 15. Oh, we got those in heaven. Amen. Look at it in Luke 15 
and verse number 7. And this Bible said, and here's rejoicing. We're going to see that threefold in Luke 15. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. And so he takes us all away in glory. Amen. Now, thank God, were those that have done gone on ahead of us. Amen. Oh, what are they doing in heaven? They're rejoicing when one sinner repenteth. Amen. And then there's not only the congregation in heaven, but I see, thank God, as I look down at this text on this day, I see the friends and neighbors. Amen. In Luke 15, verse 6, And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. Amen. And I'm telling you, this one had called his friend and his neighbor. I want you to come and rejoice with me. Oh, I, I went out and found that sheep that has went astray. I'm telling you, God's people can rejoice. Amen. When sinners get saved. And when saved folk, I'll tell you, that's transgressed against the Lord, get their heart right with God. Boy, it makes my heart rejoice to hear about people getting right with God. We seem like that's a thing of the past in these days. We don't see many people making their way to an old-fashioned altar or getting down on their knees and getting right with God. But oh, thank God. These pre three perspective group, the, the publicans and sinners, the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious crowd with their religious personalities, their performances, their profession, and their ruined personality. But here's the publicans and sinners. Hey, they drew near to hear what the Lord had to say. And of course, joined in the groups is the neighbors and the friends and even the servants. In Luke 15, verse 22, the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Amen. Oh, here's that son that went wayward and went down in the far country. But I'll tell you, he didn't stay there. He was he was a son of a father, could not stay in the far country. And so his resolve was, I, I, I've sinned against heaven. And he goes back to the father. Amen. And the father comes, I'm telling you, well, he's even yet on his way. The Father comes with for him, amen, and and shows him compassion, falls on his neck and kisses him, and thank God gets out the robe. He, he's in rags and run, bend down at the hog pen and puts a ring on his hand, speaking of ownership, and a robe, thank God, and thank God, uh, shoes on his feet. He's not a slave. He's not a servant. He's a son, put shoes on his feet. Amen. And so we're seeing these three perspective groups mentioned in Luke 15. And three particular things lost. But then on a third note on this day, I see a threefold perspective view of man in Luke chapter 15. Notice in this text in Luke 15 and verse 4. What man of you having a hundred sheep? And then in Luke 15, 8, And what woman having ten pieces of silver? And then in Luke 15 and verse 2, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. On a threefold note, threefold perspective view of man. A man, what man of you has a hundred? He talks about man. Oh yes, he's bringing these. He's using a earthly story to give a greater truth spiritually of heavenly things. Amen. And I see, thank God, this Son of Man. Oh yes, our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Luke fifteen 
Luke 19, 10, and our Lord's enlarging on the theme of the Gospel of Luke. For the Son of Man is come uh, to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. And oh, if I see anything in Luke 15, that's His, his omni-purpose. Amen. Oh, His all altogether purpose for coming into this world, stepping down from glory, and stepping in a body of flesh, becoming man, less sin. Amen. That he could go upon the cross and all in that body of flesh uh, pay the sin debt in full. All the God man. First Timothy 2 5, 6 said, There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, the man Christ Jesus. And I want to focus on it just for a few minutes this morning in this little message. A threefold perspective view of man emphasizing the Son of Man. In John chapter 4 and verse number 29. All looking down at this Bible. Here our Lord had went much out of His way in travel. He went into the city of Samaria. And Samaria would be the center part of Israel. You got Judah and Jerusalem in the south. And you got Galilee in the upper end. But in the middle is this place called Samaria. The half breeds and our Lord went much out of his you'd have to know the layout of the journey that our Lord went much out of his way to a fallen woman at Jacob's well and thank God he conversed with a woman that had come to the well many times had a draw from Jacob's well and even water from the well now. Even till this day, I've stood there in under, I think it's a Russian or Orthodox church. Uh, they've got built over the well, but you can drop the bucket in Jacob's well to this day and drink the water from Jacob's well. But this woman had come at noon. I tell you, an outcast wouldn't be welcome in the average local church of our day. But our Lord conversed with a fallen woman at Jacob's well. And thank God she went away different than she came. She she come to the well to draw from Jacob's well and went into the city with a well of water springing up in her. She had met the Lord. She had met the Christ of God. The one that was that prophet to come. She said, I know that the Messiah is come. And oh, she said, come. She went into the city and said, come. See a man which told me all things that ever I did. Amen. I see then this phrase, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? I see the Messiah in his omniscience. Hey, all the attributes of God the Father and God the Son are all in, 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 involved in the person of our Lord. His omniscient, all-knowing. Thank God. He knew all about this woman. And she, she got saved. Amen. She got a drink of living water. And said, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And then in John 7, 46, the saying is said, Never a man spake like this man. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the last day of the feast day. Oh, I tell you, our Lord stood and cried and said, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. And out of his belly shall flow living Oh, living water. And he was talking beforehand, before the Spirit would come and indwell believers. But all oh, they said, Who is this one that you're talking about? All oh, the crowd was inquiring, Who is the one that you're talking about? And they said, Come and let us let us show you. Oh, never man spake like this man. Oh, I see his omni sapiens. He's all wisdom. Amen. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ is the all-wise God. 
Jude said it well in the book of Jude as before he, he closed this preface to the revelation. And he said in Jude verse 25, and I believe I've got the right, right verse I'll give you. And he said to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. And so emphasizing the humanity of Christ, the Son of Man, this man that receiveth sinner, this man, thank God, or the man Christ Jesus, who on the cross gave himself a ransom for all. Amen. We're seeing a perspective view of man. In Luke chapter 5, the Son of Man emphasized. Not only the woman at the well said, Come see a man. Hadn't told me all everything that I had ever done. And, and of course the crowd in John 7. Oh when he had stood and cried. And said if any man thirsts let him come to me and drink. And our Lord I tell you it was said of him. Never man spake like this man. And I could go further with that. Not only all knowing and all wise. But the saying was said. In Mark chapter 4, verse 41. Oh, I'm telling you, here's the one, the great I am, the God of glory. Amen. In a person, the Lord, and I tell you, would calm the sea. The creator that makes it consent and the controlling of the creator himself. In a person, the Lord, and on the sea. I tell you, when the, the waters and the winds are, we're carrying the boat and is about to perish. And our Lord Jesus said, Hey man, just I said, peace, be still. And and the sea calmed down. And the waves quit uh, uh, blow. Uh, the wind quit blowing. And the waves settled down. Because they said, What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. That speaks his arm of his omni. Potence, that means he's all powerful. Oh, the Lord Jesus, he said in Matthew 28, in the Great Commission, he said, All power is given me in heaven and earth. Amen. And then in John chapter 19, verse 5, it was Pilate that brought him forth and before his crucifixion. And all oh, our Lord Jesus, and we we'll see it, we behold his sufferings and his scourging and the scoffing. And all oh, Pilate said, I'm bringing him forth that you may know I find no fault in this man. This man, boy, oh, said, Behold the man, the man Christ Jesus. And if we see anything in Luke chapter 15, as I've already stated in the lesson today, we're going to see him show up. As the third son in Luke 15, not only we see the we're going to see the younger son and the elder son, but we're going to see the perfect son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that did not come down to go into a far country and live in riotous living and live wayward, but all the sinless Lamb of God has always been been the Son of God. Amen. From all a beginning, he could say in John 8, 46, who convinces me of sin. That's what our Lord Jesus could say of himself. Who convinces me of sin. It was a father could ring out three times in Scripture and said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And so we see him the perspective view of man. And then as I bring this message to a close, and I'll kind of just give you a little bit to whet your appetite and read over it like I've been doing over and over and get an overall look of Luke chapter 15. Three parables of Christ. Three parables of Christ in His answer to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Somebody said some 30 to 40 parables that are put down in the three Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm not sure. I've not made the count, but that's what I, I've been told from reliable. So some 30 to 40 
parables laid down in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, I just kind of giving you the, what's going to close for my message on this day. Somebody says, what in the world is a parable anyway? Well, we get it from the Greek word parabola, which means comparison. And the Lord is illustrating truth. Amen. I wrote this down, illustrating, giving an earthly illustration, speaking of the greater truth spiritually. And three types of parables are grouped together in, in speaking of parables, scripturally speaking. Similitude, a parable, and illustrate. All three of these are types of the one word parable. An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Oh, thank God. Sometimes he speaks, I said, to reveal truth and sometimes to conceal truth. Amen. And so our Lord has given us in Luke 15, three distinct times. He gives us a parable of a lost sheep and the parable of a lost silver and a parable of a lost son. Amen. And I, I, I really want to just pick it up uh, right here. I, I look down. I'm looking in Scripture to find the Holy Trinity of God. <laughs> I tell you, this delights my heart to find, and I've been doing that for, for several days now. And just looking in Scripture, every account I can find where the Trinity, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, where they show up in Scripture. Well, they're doing that right here in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15. You might want to think about it. We have the Son depicted as the shepherd of the sheep in Luke chapter 15, verse 4 and through verse number 6. Amen. All oh, the good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep. Amen. John 10, 11. The good shepherd of Psalm 22. Thank God. As, as the psalmist David uh, speaks of our Lord Jesus. A, a graphic picture of death by crucifixion. The good shepherd that laid down his life for the sheep. And of course, not only in the shepherd work of our Lord Jesus. Not only the good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep, but the great shepherd that cares for the sheep. Answering to Psalm chapter 23. Amen. Hebrews 13 and verse 20 said, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep. He's not only the shepherd that give his life for the sheep but he's the great shepherd that graciously cares for the sheep well oh, that's why this uh, uh, this sheep had went astray went out in the bushes and and of course sheep are i tell you they're a defenseless animal they get lost at nothing and all left to themselves they wander off but here's the great shepherd Thank God that left the ninety and nine and went out till he found that one which was lost. Amen. And of course, thank God, the, the Spirit of God. Not only the Son of God is mentioned here in the Trinity, but the Spirit of God is mentioned in this woman that had lost her silver. She had lost one piece of silver of the ten pieces of Silver, which would be a a symbol of of marriage in, in marriage in 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 Israel's time, and of course the spirit of God, the searching spirit of God. Oh, you cannot you cannot divide from the the spirit of God from the Father and the Son and the work of redemption and salvation. He has his person. He has his place. His position. In the work of not only creation, but in the work of redemption and salvation. And so the spirits here, when we speak about this lost silver, all this woman that she swept her house and seek diligently till she found it. All that's a depicting the Spirit of God that does the searching. Christ paid the price 
to redeem us. Amen. Oh, we were sheep gone astray. And I tell you, went to our own way. But I'm glad the shepherd died for us. Amen. But now that we've been brought in, the Spirit has searched us out, found us lost, and saved us from death unto life, from darkness unto light, and from being lost to being found. And the last portion with the Father and Son's all I tell you depicts God the Father Himself. I have a message I pray, and I looked up my notes uh, this week and uh, on the computer, and I had to go. I got about uh, well, I got probably about twenty something CD drives that I have that I connect to my computer and brings up all my messages from the past. Amen. A lot of them from the past, even right here at Morning Star when I taught in the Sunday school and of course the other church I pastored but anyway I'm picking up how that the Father is spoken of God the Father Himself in the Trinity of God is spoken of with this Father and Son relationship of Luke chapter 15 a compassionate Father and a prodigal Son Amen. A father, thank God, would not let go of his son that had been down in the far country. He kept looking for that son. And one day, thank God, he shows up. And the father in his compassionate and love, and he run toward him and kissed him and throwed his arms around him and got a robe and put on him and a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. That's just like God the Father for His own. Father, now 